What is up, all my Garage Gangsters? Welcome to another fun-filled episode of the Garage Gang Podcast. My name's Ken Knutson. This here be Joe Maderos. Over here, we got Aaron Gutierrez. Man, we got a surprise guest for you guys. Our guest is a former CIF football champion at Aurora Grande High School, multiple all-league, all-area honors, and played D1 ball at Oregon State and Iowa State, respectively. We got Garrett Owens on the podcast. Let's welcome him up, boys. What a dude, big dog. Welcome you up, my dude. How's it going, man? We're good, man. Good, good, good. <laughs> we always seem to have a little, a few couple hiccups trying to get a little Zoom meeting, trying to get on the same page, but we always <laughs> seem to land on our feet and get yeah, it. Yeah, right. But I, I just got this camera actually last week, so it's... Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Getting used to it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to get used to it, figure out the settings. Dude, it took us a while to get used to all this stuff. Oh, like, I can oh, imagine. Dude. When we first yeah, started, yeah. we just had a mic that was like sitting in the middle of all of us. And we would like mm. talk and you know it, but it picked up everything. So now yeah. we got these guys and it, it changed the game. It's a lot it's cleaner. Yeah. Easy. And for me, Zoom's always been a little bit of a little, definitely got to like trial by error. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. kind of have to like wait to talk to. Yep. So you don't cut each other off. So yeah. It's just something to get used to. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know that's that's what it is with like a three man booth too. You know, but oh, yeah. luckily we've been doing it a little over a year, so. We're pretty good at not cutting each other off anymore too much. You know, we've kind of think and sync now a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. as much as we can. But anyway, enough of the little chit chat. Uh, you're a Central Coast local, man. Um, you grew up in AG? A a yeah, Grande? so grew up in a Rio Grande, uh, lived in Napomo as a little kid, and then um, moved up to AG. Went to the dark side. Was there from like, yeah, was there <laughs> from like three years old. Um, but I, I love the central coast. There's nothing like the 805. Yeah. Where we grew up, the, the, the beach, the dunes, the snow is like four hours away. We have everything right in that little pocket. Yeah. And I think it's a gold mine. You know? Well, and we, ha like you said, it's, it, we're not too far away. We can go to a Laker game in three hours. We can go to a 49er game in four hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we were right there to where everything, and it's a day trip too. We can go make a day no trip doubt. up there if we have to. So, yeah, I, lo I love the Central Coast. It's, uh, I went and lived in Long Beach for about two years. Yeah. And when I, when I left, I was like, oh, thank God I'm getting out of the coast. Like, I can't stand it there. And I went to Long Beach for that time and I moved back and I'm like, this place rocks. Like, this oh, place yeah. is so <laughs> no nice. No doubt. Especially like, I, I've lived in Huntington Beach, I lived there for a six month stint. And man, trying to drive on that 405 freeway is something else. Dude, like, it's pain. Every it's a single nightmare. day, I would see like one or two of my accounts, but that's because you're sitting in 405 traffic for at least two hours, you know? Yeah. And, and you just appreciate that central coast. I was a delivery driver for a pizza place when I was, work when I was living over there. And oh. there's, you know, times where we'd have to take the 405 to go deliver something down the way. And it was like, nope, <laughs> I'm going to yeah, go all the no. back roads and avoid yeah. that. Yeah. I'll yeah. get a few stoplights here. Or there. So yeah, no. I'm actually the only one that's not from the Central Coast. And Garrett, I wonder if you remember me because when I first moved over here, I think it was just right after you graduated high school and you were out working with the freshman football team with Coach DeRose, uh, Coach Byers, Coach Hallback, and uh, Robert Kabara. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I got hired on as a receiver and DB coach, and that was actually the first season I coached football. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So <laughs> I just – I remember that you were kind of working with the receivers and DBs before I got there, like during the summer. And, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. That's what – yeah, yeah. So I was uh, I was helping with the program just for a little bit when I was training um, to get ready to go right. uh, to college. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. It was so much fun. You were like, yeah, man, man I'm going to Oregon State. And I'm like, oh, dude, yeah. dang, that's cool, man. That's legit. You know, not yeah. being from the area and just moving over here, you know, I had no idea, like, what high school athletes were going where. So it was really awesome yeah. to yeah, to hear that. There we go. All right. So you obviously you're an athlete. Did you have any other uh, interests growing up? Any other things that kind of? Um, I'm not going to lie. Like, growing up, it was sports. Uh, coming home after school, it was – I would have – kids come to my house and I had this green garage door that was made out of wood and it was handball, but it was like handball, oh, okay. and oh, basketball yeah. hoop. Dude, and so from trip. a little kid, I was go, go, go nonstop. And, and one thing my parents like bless them and thank them for is they never let me have video games as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I was outside until dusk and I was always riding my bike to a friend's house. I was always out and about. And I think that 
just helped me get my dexterity as a kid Absolutely. that helped me succeed later. So I think, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I can speak for us too. Uh, that was how we grew up. Yeah. I mean, we grew up, um, sports were everything. I played three, four sports all my whole life until – I didn't anymore senior after senior year, you know, going into college. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, but you know, staying out until the stoplights came on or until your mom, like your dad shouted out the door or something or, yeah, that's just, just, just the experience kids don't understand. Kids should yeah. have you know? absolutely. Yeah. You know, go play hide yeah. and go seek well, when it's uh The thing is you know, though, sunset. is sunset. I've got little kids now and. I can't trust them going out and riding around with all the That's freaking true. all the weirdos and stuff now. Like I, mm-hmm. I can't just be like, hey, like my mom. I lived on the other side of Napomo, and she mm-hmm. would be like, hey, go, um, go, you know, ride your bike down to La Pasita. It's like a good 15, 20 minute ride. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and yeah, it was it was like nowadays I can't imagine sending my daughter to go do that. No. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like hey. not a yeah, chance. Yeah, that, that's. Man, I, I can't imagine that either. It's just scary now. I think with the everyone with the accessibility of phones, it's mm-hmm. given a lot more people some weird, weird it ideas. Puts people in weird minds. Oh yeah, man. yeah, it's just, absolutely. It's all bad. Um, okay, so uh, so sports growing up, you said obviously yeah. big time sports. So what what sports were like your your go tos? So growing up, I was really into soccer. I, I love soccer. Um, I my ten year old all star team. Uh, me, Brent Vanderveen, um, man, I could name a ton of names. Gabe DeLeon was on that team. Yeah. Um, just a, a ton of people. Uh-huh. We got third at state in All-Stars. And oh, so wow. that was like a huge thing for us. And the one thing, I mean, shout out Lompoc. They uh, they beat us um, at the, the regional championship game to go to state in Bakersfield. And we had won all our games to get to that point, like, Mm-hmm. four or five games uh-huh. and we lose that game to them but we got the bid to go to state so like that was just so much fun you know so- like soccer that got me into that and then i i really fell in love with running so i don't i don't know if you guys know oh, wow. I, I ran track um nice. and growing up i would do junior olympics and i would go to events and my grandpa uh rest in peace gary owens um he would take me to track meets also and and it was just so much fun because I would go to these elite events and I would uh-huh. do really well. Yeah. Like I, I want to say in sixth grade, I ran like a five thirteen mile. Holy oh, dang. shit! I've yeah. never and ran. And then in a eighth grade, I ran in the fifteen hundred. I ran like four fifty three. So I was moving yeah. when I was yeah. young, and in the eight hundred, I ran like <laughs> two. What I run like two thirteen. My guy. Yeah. So I, I was like, as a kid, I was fast. And then once I f- fell in love with football, it was like yeah. I got to put on weight. It slowed me down. But, yeah, but you uh, know how to run correctly oh, from track, that? you know. But but you but from doing all that track, mm. it, it you know it shows itself nice in football because it teaches you how to run correctly. You know, people, oh yeah, people know how yeah. to run. Like maybe people are talented at running fast, but when you do track, it teaches you to to run the correct way, which you know make you yeah. faster. And I would I would go and get. Um, there's a guy in San Luis, Coach Krill. Okay. I would do, um, like, he would have a bunch of kids come out and do private, like, sprint lessons on technique and form and put us through track workouts. And then I would also work with um, another uh, club in Slow called SLDC. They're like a running club, um, and, and they allow kids to go to all these Junior Olympic events. And it, that was just so much fun, just doing that twice a week, you know, go yeah. compete. And I would always do the track events up at Atascadero on those Wednesday nights um, in the summers. I don't know if you guys have ever done the all-comer meet like that. Mm-mm. But my my parents, uh, this year, they started um, an all-comers meet. And they just recently had three of them, and it was just a hit at AG. That's yeah. sick. Well, yeah, I, so I was going like, to say, I'm not surprised you were a runner because yeah. when I was driving to work all the time, I'd always see your mom running on the back roads like Wasna Road and all that back there. Oh yeah, Every time, they go on four or five, like grand. We call it the Grand Loop. It's just a whole loop of AG that yeah. we go on. And I, as a kid, would ride my bike with them. Uh-huh. And then it got to the point where I would run it, and then they still do it to this day. Yeah, I didn't know you were a runner like that, but it doesn't surprise me one bit yeah. after, yeah. after <laughs> seeing your parents and all that. <laughs> yeah. So for the other interests, you know, um, 
I know you said your mom or your parents didn't let you play video games or didn't introduce you to video games too much when you were a kid. But mm -hmm. I know we talked a little bit before the pod. I saw that you were streaming a little bit on Twitch. What? Yeah. Um, shout out Mr. G Money 805. As I was going to uh, say, I was like, yeah, give <laughs> yeah, me a shout out. Give yourself a uh, shout I just, out. And I recently started to yeah. stream just because I feel like I've I started to play video games on a PC like this about mm -hmm. a year ago. And I just like to do it in my spare time. Like work yeah. for me comes priority number one, but I just love to play these video games because my cousin introduced me mm -hmm. and he's like, dude, you got to download Apex, bro. It's <laughs> this and that. And so I downloaded it when it first came out, season one. It's and that was the right first now. ever game <laughs> I played. So it was really? like, oh, yeah. oh wow. And then I got Call of Duty. COVID happened. Yeah. Got kind of good at it, like rec recently. At the war zone? And I switched over to Apex because it's optimized better. Yeah. So I can actually stream it. And okay. so I just been doing that for fun, you know, just hanging out. That's cool. That's that's yeah. legit, Sniper gang. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go, man. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of people are hopping over to Apex right now because Warzone's kinda like Hackerville at the moment. Yeah, it's so. Hackerville. It's it's just nonstop. You get into a game and someone's walling. They put that new waller hack wall in hack, the game. Yeah perk i don't even know i haven't played it since i have yeah. no idea what you're <laughs> i know i know yeah. you don't know. i'm so bad at call of duty <laughs> I'm a video game nerd now it's, yeah. it's kinda, I'm well i'm just so I, I love video games but like you know me and kenny back in the day i'd go over to his house and uh he'd be on the, the sticks playing and i'd be on the headset like you fucking suck dude <laughs> <laughs> you, shit. you know what i mean have a couple yeah, beers oh, yeah. i'd be playing because i'm not you know back in the day i wasn't like I didn't really like wearing the headset and talking to all these little munchkins. Talking and I, and I love you know, talking shit. Oh, oh, yeah. So, I would go, like, so Brandon Bergia, I don't know if you guys know him. Sounds familiar um, for sure. He, I would go to his house often as a kid, and he had video games. He would play Call of Duty. Yeah. And I would just sit there and be like mesmerized yeah. by the him playing and just him talking crap. It was so much fun just like watching as a kid and then as I'm <laughs> older now. That's all I want to do <laughs> yeah no i know it's like when you get home you're like uh it's a good outlet. i think i'm just gonna go chill yeah. and play some video games yeah, we, yeah, but we, for me for me when my fiance's home it's like no video games allowed yeah that's like the cross the line you know yeah. Yeah. got you cats away so the mice will play that's what yep. it is. So video games. I, I gamer. I, I like a Call of Duty. I'm I'm all right at it. But the thing that sucks is right now my girlfriend and I live out in the country, so I got like, just terrible internet connection. Literally the worst. Yeah, it took me like four days to download Warzone. Oh, and then I finally man. downloaded it, and it's then like I couldn't gigs. even get on it. Yeah, because it was just so the the ping's probably so bad. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think when we move, I'm gonna kind of cool. probably get more into that. So Garrett, where'd you where'd you go to uh, where'd you go to uh, middle school around here, junior high? I went to Paulding, Paulding oh, Middle nice. School Paulding. up on the hill. Yeah, my mom actually is a PE teacher there. Oh, oh okay. There you uh, go. So I what's crazy is I've had my mom as a PE teacher from uh, third grade to sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Didn't have her in seventh grade, and then she came to Paulding Middle School in eighth grade, and then she's bounced around bef after that once I left, and then I she's still there now. But yeah, oh, she's still cool. teaching there. Yeah, she's still teaching there. Nice. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, yeah. skipping forward to now to the big – played football, AG high. You were kicker, wide receiver, right? Yep. Hey, and, and, and so you got a scholarship as a kicker, but I went to yeah. a lot of your games, and you were a damn good receiver. Yeah. So I got, I'll give you some credit <laughs> on that, my guy. I appreciate it. it you know, it's <laughs> – it was a lot of hard work, and, and I, I really believe yeah. that, like, me and my teammates, we put the work in, and we would go grind and, uh, when we didn't need to, and I think that played a huge part in our success. Yeah. We would hit the weight room every week at 6 a.m., and I think that that really played a huge role. Shout out Mark Flowers there you um, go. <laughs> he, he and Coach Goose, and they got us in that weight room. If we weren't there, like, see ya, you're not on the team type, type deal. So it was like, it was really strict and all of us were cohesive with that. So I think that's what really made us successful and good, you yeah. know? Yeah. Well, you got your senior class was, yeah, was we were one, of, one of the most spectacular classes yeah. that I've seen at AG high. You guys were really freaking good. Yeah. I, I could name off so many <laughs> names and then uh, it, with the names that didn't even go out and play football. Yeah. There's, there's guys that were on our D line, like, James King, Morgan Boldwan. These guys were the workhorses of our football team that were never, ever, ever talked about. And, yeah. and they held it down on that yep. D-line. Like, they're 5'9", squatting 400 pounds yep. in high school. Like, holy uh, crap. Just you know? monsters. You know? Yeah. Aaron and I, 
uh, when you guys made your CIF playoff run. We got mm-hmm. to go see, uh, I think it started with Lompoc, then Chaminade, then Culver City or whatever. We mm-hmm. we got They were all home games, I think. We got to see them all. Yeah, no. And, yeah. and it was like, I was like, damn, what yeah. the? Well, so I've. These teams I, aren't even like I had been close. Watching, I've been watching your class for a while because my, my I, I guess it's like my step grandpa. You know, Rich Aguilera? He's the a, name sounds familiar. He's the yeah. film one of the film coaches for your oh, team. Oh yeah, 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 Coach Rich. Coach Rich. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he married my grandma a while back. So we ever right. since you know they were together, we've been pretty close. And so I grew up going to AG games. And then obviously once Napomo was built, I was like, you know, yeah. fuck you, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, I still went to the games because you guys were always playing some pretty good teams and whatnot. And so I remember um seeing like seth jacobs his freshman year playing on varsity and i was like you could just tell when it's someone is special you know what i mean and i remember oh, watching man. him play yeah. as a freshman i think he played like safety or something when he came up as a freshman and i was just like this guy he's needs to be he needs different. to be starting running back like or something he's, he's a freak yeah yeah we i mean by the time he was a senior we had him playing tight end quarterback running back uh, outside yeah. linebacker rush Any, here. Anything like, you can he do. played everything. The guy was just a freak. <laughs> yeah. Um and, and he just he went on to be very successful and it's yeah. unfortunate. I don't know if you guys know he got hurt. Yeah. Um he had that neck injury. So uh but yeah the him I I remember in youth football he broke a couple kids ribs like just just by hitting them so hard and it was like this kid yeah. is gonna be good. Yeah. Just, Special. Know? Don't, yeah. don't don't worry. I, I'm in talks to him with him to get on here too as well. Oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's coming up, but he, I know he just had a new baby boy, so give him yeah. some time. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's exciting for him. But um, so yeah, you won your CIF championship, man. What what was what would you say your biggest game over there was? Like just one oh, of the craziest man. games. Biggest game at HE. I I would say my senior year when we played um, Templeton. That would probably have been my like best game. I mean, they're not Got very you. good, but I yeah. mean, I had a lot of catches, 121 yards receiving. I think I had two touchdowns and uh, the 57 yard field goal. Yeah, and, <laughs> what a um, boot! Uh, what a boot! And, like another field goal. So I, I just I had a phenomenal game. What's crazy about that was the Oregon State head coach was there, Mike Riley. Oh, so, he was so that was the one to hit the 57 and, yarder. But he was there to watch Brent uh-huh. Vanderveen. So. It was just really unique, and then he knew who I was, told the coach I got a phone call that next week. So it was just really a unique experience. But it, besides that, that CIF championship game, having – I think there was like 8,000 people there was just people. unreal. I, I as a, At that point in my life, I've never played in front of that many people, and it was so loud. I'm getting chills thinking about it because the whole time I had chills, and it, it was yeah. such an experience. And then I had an 88 – 88, 78 yard touchdown catch. Uh-huh. And and I ran all the way back through the end zone, all the way to the track, just because like I couldn't believe I scored. You know, uh-huh. I just kept running. <laughs> and it was just it, it was those two games just are highlights in my mind forever. Yeah. Well, I remember you guys smoked Culver City, right? Like I don't I don't, yeah, it was I don't a close remember game for a little bit. I don't remember it being that close. Quarter. Like it was I think I it felt- was twenty one to fifty two. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> I was remember- like twenty I think it was twenty one. To 52. Yeah. yeah. But it was like, it was 21 to like 21, I think, at one point, yeah. and then we just took away. Yeah. Well, and but I remember Chaminade was supposed to be, I remember. Chaminade the, was unreal. Yeah, they were supposed to be so great, all this stuff. And I guess their coach got like 100 grand a year to coach the team, all this stuff. And you're like, wow. And then I'm not going to lie, like, they did not look that great when they played you guys. Like, I, I, I'm not saying they weren't good, but like, you got your game plan and, uh, and the execution they, was just yeah. And if you if you read all the newspaper articles, they counted us out. They said yeah. we're not fast enough. They said Culver City's too fast. This and that. And it's yeah. like you don't know speed like yeah. we know speed. Like exactly. we run through grass that's this thick. Yeah, come to our field. Yeah, and see what speed is. You Fly know? sweet, baby. And yeah, <laughs> I think that it gave us an advantage. They had mud mud in their shoes, and, yeah. and that's what we've always grown up with is that grind in the dirt. So I, I think that helps us at least, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, well, and and you you talked about Vander is it Vander Veen or Vander Bean? Vander Veen. Vander Veen. Yeah, so yeah, Vander, we call them the Vander Veen. All the Did time. you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but so Vander Veen, I mean, he was a big boy and he was a really good quarterback. That oh, dude could sling very it. Yeah, and he's he, fat. He was fast. Yeah. yeah. How do you tackle someone that's six like, five two, twenty? 
running you over in high school. You exactly. Know? And then you guys had a, bring down. a good off. I remember you had a good tackle that ended up going with you guys to to uh, Oregon State, right? Yeah. So Garrett Weinrich. Weinrich. He, he that's was, was top in the country lineman coming out. What was unfortunate with him was he blew his knee out oh, uh, that first week of fall camp. So blew his knee out and and it kind of set him back. He it took him about a year to a year and a half to finally get back. And once he was able to, it was just so much pain yeah. that he just couldn't deal with it. He played in a couple more games and was successful. Um, it's just that kind of ended his career. But if, if you've seen him now, he looks great. I don't know if you guys have seen him now. He's oh. lost at least 100 pounds. Oh, maybe really? Less. Wow. But he, he looks great. Yeah. Hell yeah. What about what's what's Brent up to? Uh, Brent is working. What is he doing? He just moved to San Diego. He's doing construction and doing home flips and That's doing that up. kind of stuff. Nice. Yeah. All right. Dope. That's he was dope. working for his dad for a while doing construction, and uh-huh. he was also working for his another company doing doing that kind of stuff. Very yeah. nice. So okay, we talked about your biggest game played. Who was in, in your guys' eyes your biggest rival? In high school, I mean, I want to say slow, but that was like yeah, you, they, you the beat rivalry, the shit out of them. They weren't year. really our rival. That we was just, like an old school more rivalry. Though. Yeah, it was yeah. very old school, and we blew them out every time we played them. Yeah. And so it was really Lompoc, I guess. I was gonna say but it's got to be Lompoc. Yeah. We started off the year where that Lompoc game, I didn't play defense the yeah. whole game. I only played offense. I was the kicker, and they didn't want to play me on defense. And then by the end of that Lompoc game, I me and my coach kind of got into it, but I was like, put me in the game. And so yeah. I went in and got a pick the fourth quarter. And when, we when, had a chance to go down and drive. Yeah. And we just didn't get it done. But, winners winners uh, always want the ball, man. That's what I know, is. right? Yeah. But I think them and uh, who would be another one? Paso, Paso Robles. Yeah. They were always like, they, we always, I was friends with some guys on that team. So to me, it was a little bit of a rivalry. Um, just playing sports growing up and then playing different sports like basketball and track. Well, they were really good too. When, when you were playing, right. It was Atascadero and Paso were still really good teams. Yeah, they were very good. I mean, Atascadero, we were concerned with them all, all, you know, like (laughs) taking steroids because they were so big. That was a running joke. We we used to talk shit to them all the time about that. Bro, they were always, uh, and we had Elijah to find out the dude who went to San Diego state, uh, the running back, what was his name? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, uh, one of the – I forget his name, but he got in trouble for steroids. I wouldn't doubt it. We yeah, were talking Dr. to Elijah – we had Elijah Cooks on the podcast um, a, oh, little, nice. a little yeah. bit ago. And we talked to him. We were like, yeah, because you know he went to Atascadero's last two yeah. years. And we were like, yeah, we remember when we played – or when we were playing uh, high school football, we all thought all the Atascadero kids were on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, what did he have to say about that? He just laughed and was like, hey, yeah. I can hey. see it. Yeah. <laughs> I just, remember, I just remember talking shit in basketball. Like, like I would always be like, "Where's your neck, dog?" <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, there are always some down. weird looking dudes on the on the Tascadero, you know, yeah. really bad acne team. too. Country really bad acne, them. dude. It was a giveaway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Time for our first segment. You well, think? Hold, on, hold on. So, the I know you said you get goosebumps on like. Uh, oh, by the way, your our biggest rival was you guys was AG. Oh yeah, but. We played in the first ever N- Napomo AG matchup where we're the only team to win. <laughs> oh, oh shoot! So we, that's big. Yeah, yeah. We, though, so like, like we, can, me and Kenny can be like, yeah, we're undefeated. We never lost. Yeah, we never, yeah, never, never lost. lost. I never what lost. year? So what year did you guys go to high school? Two thousand. We graduated two thousand nine. Um, oh, me and so Aaron, I was a freshman. Yeah, yeah. Me and Aaron are from our, our went to Napomo. He went to Tulare in the Valley. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, that that game was also gnarly. That was like there was like five thousand people there. I think, yeah, is what, is it was number. insanely packed. Yeah, yeah. Was, I we got I like hot dogs and nachos thrown on us and shit. <laughs> walking from the <laughs> locker rooms. It yeah. was great. It was great. I was sitting in fifty yard line that game. Yeah, I remember yeah. that one. And then uh, we hang a twenty four bomb, and it was like. No. Back on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you guys yeah. had Coach McClurg? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. our boy. Yeah, he was he was my PE teacher. Nice. Oh, really? Where? Yeah. At? So he um, at Harlow Elementary. Oh, that's yeah. how, that's how I know well? him. And then he was friends with my really good friends with my mom. So, and then um, they worked together. So I cannot was, see him as a fucking elementary no, teacher. No. He, yeah, was a, he was cool when he first came in. Um, it was our freshman year. It was yeah. his first year at Napoma High. And mm-hmm. I literally told my mom when I went home, I was like, "We have a freaking drill sergeant." 
for a PE teacher, dude. <laughs> yeah. He was like, you will not laugh. You listen to me. Yeah. And he would like scream at kids, that's, dude. And now that's like our brother, dude. Friend of the pod. He was on our live show. We had at Man Rock Brew over there in uh-huh. Grover oh, yeah. AG. We had a little live pod. show with him. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Nice. So he's. He's awesome. He's one of my favorite. He was uh, ever, one of my he was people. P PE teacher with uh, it was my mom, him, and Neil Reed. Do you guys remember? Yeah, oh, rest man. in peace, R.I.P. Yeah, Neil R.I.P. Reed. Yeah, yeah he, them three together were our PE teachers for like two years. What a great PE teacher! What a great ever. group right there. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, group. phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, Neil was awesome. <laughs> I know. I was McClurg's TA for like three years and. Yeah. For always a freshman class, yep. and we would just be like, fucking, fucking freshmen. I hate freshmen. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them. losers. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> noobs. Yeah. So we do different segments here. So we have a segment called Gang Debate. So what we're gonna do? Okay. We're gonna let's ju- we'll kind of go around the table. Um, we're gonna ask a question. We'll all answer it. So if you could change one rule about football, what would that be? I'll start it off. So, we'll let you give you time yeah. to think, so you okay. can you can pick out what you want. I'm going with roughing the passer, and I'm not saying I'm going to take out roughing the passer because there's there's situations where it's needed, but all these new rules where you can't even like put your weight on the quarterback, you can't like if you're if you go to swipe for the ball and you hit him on the helmet, it's a 15 yard penalty. I'm like, yeah. what? Like yeah. this is football, man. You know, like they're gonna get hit. I understand no if doubt. you if you pick them up and like slam them on their head, yeah. and you're being real a real dick about it. But like, if you're just hitting someone and trying to make a play, like I, I think it's gotten way too cupcake for uh, for for any lineman, and especially because I was a defensive end. So it's like, yeah, it really is. I can't imagine trying to rush the passer and then you know you, you go to swat a ball and you hit him in the helmet and it's a penalty. I, I just can't imagine that being a penalty. And when the first time I saw that, I was like, no, they're gonna pick that flag up. And they they and they continually called it. And I'm like, yeah, football's going down. <laughs> yeah, um, I, w- I would agree with you on that. So yeah. one rule we could change. Yeah, anything really open. Anything you want to add or take away, what whatever I, your heart desires. I think I would change. Well, that was loud. I think I would change uh, I know, uh, the overtime format. Really. Um, make it more college. Make it more college like, or some, I agree with that. Some variant of that, maybe not. What do they start at college on the twenty five or twenty or twenty five? Yeah. So maybe yeah. start on maybe like a little 40. bit more back, uh, but like something where both teams get a legit shot. I mean, now it's better. I mean, they're taking baby steps. It's like yeah. okay, if they don't score a touchdown, then the other team gets a chance. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, I think it would be cool. And, I think it would only be good for the NFL. I yeah. mean, it would just I, add, I, add a little bit more parity and more football, which is what they want, essentially. Yeah. Right. So I, I think for me, being a kicker, I've always thought Dude. of putting a pole right dead center. You hit the pole, you oh. get five points. <laughs> there we okay. go. Okay. That would be, I think that one would be cool yeah. because how many times are they going to hit dead center? And that's something that as kickers, we would go out and practice on kicking out a pole, and you maybe oh, hit – a couple maybe in practice, you know? Uh And so I think that one would be cool. Just adding that rule in there or adding a pole in there. Can you imagine like going to win the game for a five pointer? Like you could win the Super Bowl on a five pointer. That'd be so dope. Rather than doing these Hail Marys, you know, like if you're at the 35 yard line, what are the chances of throwing a Hail Mary versus, I guess it would probably be a little bit better, but depends on who your receivers are. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Circumstance. Yeah. Hell yeah, that's actually a really good one. I like it. I never thought about I just that. Like it's a different wrinkle. I, fig- I figured it'd be a kicker rule, and I <laughs> like it. Yeah. You did yeah. say you did say that last yeah. year. Oh, it's probably gonna be a kicker rule, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's instantly where my brain went. Yeah. Hey, I get it. For, I went to D line, so for mine, I think instead of to score a touchdown, you got to break the plane. I think you got to get two feet in the end zone. For Ooh. for for what? Eh. Just to score touch on like rugby rules. I think so, but there's, I mean, breaking the plane. I, I don't know. The ball. The I don't balls. mind it. I I think that I mean, you, you would, you would get, stop all those really cool reaching touchdowns that guys do where they dive like that. Reach for the pylon. Yeah, right. I love those touchdowns, man. I'm just saying, two feet in because there's been a lot of controversy with. Is it a touchdown? Is it not? But a it touchdown? sucks when you're carrying some fools and you're just like yeah. over the line. Yeah, you know what I mean. But at least one foot in. Sure. Not maybe not two, at least one, to get your body through the yeah, the, the line. Yeah, okay, um, it's different. I don't mind it, but I really like that kicking one. 
<laughs> yeah, that, really that's like actually, that. that's pretty, that'd be pretty cool. Any uh, NFL executives listening to our podcast, Boom, better figure it one. out. <laughs> you got a real winner. <laughs> How do you feel about like the onside kick situation or what they're trying to do with kickoffs by eliminating it or like at least uh, they're I, talking about I eliminating. don't agree with it. Yeah, I don't either because that's a special part of the game. Special I think so. You showcase a fast uh, athlete in the back who can do things that the fans really want to watch, you know, and th- these players sign up to go head to head in these collisions. Th- that's what they get paid for. And uh, I think for the league to step in and say, no. This isn't okay. I think, I think they need to step away and, and listen to the players because the yeah. players want to play football. Absolutely. Well, I, I look at it like, if you take that away, we never get to see Dante Hall's amazing season. We never get to see Devin Hester do yep. all the amazing returns he had. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it, it's just and and what my favorite thing is yep. is like the the Deshaun Jackson one where he fumbles it, takes it to the house to win the game or you know yeah. they throw ed reed back there for one return just because they need a return and yep. he takes it to the house that is yep. exciting shit and we would never get to see that if they took that out and know? that's what the, pe- the people pay for yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely and, and it's i was all- just thinking about an, a, another rule real cool. quick Shoot uh it. was on a kickoff if it goes through the uprights you get like a point dude yeah. i've yeah. always thought that get a point for if you kick it to the uprights you, from yeah, the other 35 like come on yeah that's a yeah. cannon of a leg if you do that yeah <laughs> dude, janikowski bro. i think would would be the all, nfl's yeah. all-time yeah. leading scorer <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure if that was the thing for sure i also think the kickoffs have been watered down all well, i mean they've i don't think it has been watered down already yeah. pretty much as much as they could do without yeah. eliminating it together because with you know they moved it up 10 yards and it, Basically, everything's a a knee. Uh, or it's a, like a pooch kick or a knee. Yeah, yeah. or or they could just like even fair they catch, fair catch and then still get it at the twenty five, right? Like anywhere, Correct. basically. Yeah, it's just, weird. The, the first time I saw that, I, I saw like, what's I, this guy doing? I saw a dude fair <laughs> catch it at like the four. I'm all, uh, this guy's a dumbass, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, then, and then they take it up. I was like, what is this? Like, uh, yeah. so snuck, it took me a sec. They snuck weird. that rolling on us, yeah. dude. I ain't gonna lie yeah. about that. They should listen to our rules. Absolutely. I know. I agree. <laughs> all right. So coming out of that, I want to know, because um, we all uh, played sports growing up, and we always wished we got recruited. Um, what was it like to be recruited? What was it like to have you know people want trying to get you to go to their school? I mean, it was awesome. And kind of like trying to think about it now and reflect on it, um, I I really did a lot of the work, me and my dad and – Coach Goosen, we did a lot of the work to get my name out there, and I would I would go home and sit at my my like computer laptop, and I would search every single college football team. Hey, <laughs> I would search every single college football team, and send. I would look up all their coaches, and I would send them all emails. Hey, I did, I'm a five star kicker through Chris Saylor kicking and here's my highlight like boom this is my junior season and I put all my best clips and then send it and I sent over 800 emails I think Holy and cow. because of that I got into all these schools like on their radar and I would get mail I remember I got one from LSU one time and I was like holy smoke by you Bengals. <laughs> when do I commit where can I commit <laughs> And then it got to the point where it was like the student who works in the office would bring out the mail to the kids and I would get mail every single day, like school letters. And this is our school. Check out the photos or we're, we love you and this and that. And sometimes you get like a handwritten one and that would be like really cool. Um, That's, you know, they're really interested. Yeah. That means it really were. And then we'd be at 6 AM lifting and you, we would have coaches come in because coach Goosen would be like, you have to fly out here and see these guys in person. Like there, it's not just something that you can watch film, but you got to yeah. come out here and see these guys work out in person. 100%. Um, and so we always had co- college coaches coming into our weight room and like really checking us out. Well, and, and it was warranted with your guys' class too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you guys had some players. So like D one. No so, yeah. Wow, good on Coach Goosen, man. Yeah. That was yeah. looking uh, out, dude. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that, that's awesome. one thing that I think uh, Napomo has lacked because we've had some pretty good talent come out of Napomo, yeah. and no one ever really gets the the recognition or the recruit recruiting that they should. There was a guy oh, that we played with named Dwayne Hanna. Um, oh, I remember Dwayne. Dwayne oh, Hanna is the best football player that I've ever played with. He was yeah. an absolute freak, and he only went to uh, Sac State. 
Yep. He went to the, he's still in the NFL, isn't he? No, no, no. no. That, so that, that was Akeem King. Yeah. That was Akeem, Akeem King. Akeem King. Yeah, and right. I'm not even going to lie. When Akeem was in high school, I can tell you right now, I did not think he was going to be a pro. I didn't think he was going to go D1. No, uh, me neither. Yeah. And then he went D1. And then we're like, okay, cool. Akeem's playing D1 football. And then yeah. all of a sudden the draft comes around. You see his seventh name get round. picked in the seventh yeah. round. I'm like, wait, the Falcons picked Akeem? Like, yeah. and it, it was like, oh my God, that's amazing. And then, you know, the fir- I think his first year, they went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, and so yeah, Akeem, he was wide receiver in high school, yeah. right? Yeah. He was a wide receiver. So I remember my sophomore year against Napomo. I got stuck in for a series at corner. Uh-huh. And because of that, they put a keem out on the outside. And it was Coach McClurg. And he's talking to me, saying, We're throwing your way. Get ready. You know? ah, I love That's McClurg, such a McClurg dude. thing. Like, literally to do. talking smack. And I'm jawing <laughs> back at him, like, Oh, bring it on. You know, like, yeah. And for, what do you know? It's a nine route. Yeah. And it, it's me and him were side to side. I jumped up and swatted it down. And it was like in his hands and knocked it down. So Hell it was yeah. like that- just a. Yeah, no, you running up the sidelines. Yeah, John yeah. back, and then I ran off the that, field. That must have been that seven zero game. That uh, uh, was that was your sophomore year? Yeah, that yeah. If that was the I year after us, they, yeah, you guys, after you guys us, won seven yeah. zero, and I remember that's that being right. that being a great game. Dude, that was yeah. That's oh, funny. Yeah. I, that's such a McClure thing had an to do amazing too. Team that year too, Just straight amazing. Mm-hmm. They were good. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So okay. you okay? So you got recruited by everyone. It sounds like. What What were some of the big schools? Uh, Duke, they were really interested in me. I went out there and, and did their camp, and they ended up offering me, but the kid they offered first took the scholarship. So was that Cutcliffe, that the kind of, coach? Say that again? Was it Cutcliffe, the coach? Uh, no. No, he wasn't the coach that – I think I think he was uh, now. Maybe. Okay. It would have been the 2012. So, okay. Or, yeah, 2012. Um, 2011. I'm not sure. I, I don't. No, it's all good. Um, yeah, no. But where was I? So that recruited Duke. you. Duke Duke recruited oh, you. Oh, so Duke, um, Cal Poly, obviously local yeah. Yeah. school. They I they didn't really recruit me as a wide receiver. Um, and they only offered me a half scholarship as a kicker, which was kind of disrespectful. Yeah. yeah. For the local so, school to yeah. oh, wow. So, yeah, I was like, come on, like I, yeah. I can play wide receiver here if we really want to get down in the nitty gritty. Yeah. yeah. But um and then where are some other schools? Um it was a lot of the schools like I was interested in, and I put the effort to try and and talk to. Um, when I was transferring, I was trying to talk to um, like Mississippi State, like schools that were in the east okay. and and away from the coast, because that was something like I just wanted to get away from. But back to high school, yeah. Um, other big schools like Texas Tech, um, okay. and San Jose State, Washington State. Uh, I never really got to talk to Oregon or UCLA or USC because they took kickers. All those schools took kickers a year before. Yeah. Yeah. So they were like locked in, you know, and and that happens in this when you're trying to look for college colleges. I got my UCLA jersey on. <laughs> Repping. That's my squad. <laughs> All right. So you settled, you not settled, but you chose Oregon State. Uh, what went into that? What went into that decision to, to offer? So I, I committed my junior year to uh, Air Force, and I was I was going to go to the Air Force and play football there. I wanted to fly. That like that was like kind of something I really wanted to do, and play football. And um, I'm colorblind, so yeah. I can't fly. And uh, that was like a big factor in my mind. And then also my parents were like, "Well, you're going to be far, and you can play in the Pac-12." <laughs> and I got that uh, scholarship offer from Oregon State two weeks before signing day. So it was like, uh, okay. well, this is kind of a no brainer. I can go to Oregon state on a gray shirt, sit out a year, red shirt and have two years under my belt of getting ready to play college football. And I think that helped me be successful. And you can do it with your homies. Exactly. I got, yeah. I roomed with Brent my freshman year. And then, um, after that, him and Garrett actually roomed, uh, in a house after that. Oh really? Yeah. So we all stayed together. That's pretty sick. So I was always wondering, like, did that have a big? I, I'd imagine that had a big um, impact on your your recruitment. The fact that you you already had two friends going there, and you know, you yeah, that really out. helped because they would also help chirp in their ear, like, "We don't have a, our kicker's bad." And at at the time, um, Trevor Romain was the kicker, and he's a great kicker, and he just kind of was struggling a little bit. Yeah. So they wanted to bring someone in, and so that's why they ended up saying, like, "Okay, I got we got to bring someone in." That's so cool. That and so when I heard Oregon State, I'm like, oh wow, Oregon State. And then I saw, you know, um, Seth went to OSU too, and then I'm like, oh, 
Oklahoma State. <laughs> you guys are all you guys were all at OSU and you guys all wore black and orange, but just different. <laughs> it's funny how it all worked out like that. <laughs> yeah. I always tripped out about that. I was like, that's pretty crazy. Did uh, yeah. did they ever um they, like obviously they probably knew that you were a receiver as well. Did they ever try to like work you out at receiver? Or was it just purely it kicking. was purely kicking. Um, when, when you get to the college point, it's like it's a business. That's yeah, right. they run like clockwork. And um, uh, after practices and like when we would just go out on our own and do stuff as a freshman, I would go out there and r- absolutely run routes on some of these kids and make some of them look dumb, and they'd get mad. And <laughs> Dude, you could have hunter, was, hunter Renfro'd it. Yeah, I think dude. I really could have yeah. hung with it, but I, I've hit my head too many times. Yeah. So I think that would have been a real issue for me if I were to like go to the next level and play. Yeah. Uh, but go, I would try and do stuff after practice. Well, of course you're yeah. not just a kicker. Come on now. What, yeah. So, so what was life like in Corvallis, man? How did you like it? And I know Corvallis is a very interesting place. If you, it's, it's fun at first. Like you you get there the summer, it's hot, it's beautiful. It's as perfect as Oregon gets. And then the rain comes yep. and it rains for about four months straight, nonstop. And if it's not raining, it's cloudy. <laughs> so you get into this like weird mental space. And after year, after year one, um, it, it, you don't get used to it. And if yeah. you live there, I get it. You're born with that, like living in that. that but like, if you're not used to that kind of climate, it really starts to mess with your head. And so by year two, year three, Year four, it, I really started to get to like the point where the winters were not it for me. And so I would go to the snowboarding every weekend to get away from the rain because gotcha. it was just brutal. Damn. Well, especially, it, you know, growing up in the Central Coast didn't do any favors. Yeah. Having, oh, like, I know, having right? the best. Growing up with the best weather in the world. The, like, the world. The world. <laughs> the world, dude. It's crazy. Yeah, there's nothing close. It's, it's funny. Obviously, when you talk Oregon and Corvallis, you bring up the fog. But yesterday, we were putting the episode together, and I was like, damn, anytime I think of, like, Oregon Ducks versus Oregon State, I just think of straight fog games. You know, oh, like, yeah. anytime I turn it on, it's just a fog game, I feel like. We played in one fog game um, against USC. I was going to say, I remember. They were ranked, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was not a game I was there. Oh, that okay. was a fog game. And my special teams coach at Iowa State, he played in that game. Okay. He was the kicker for USC. Um, but he said it was nuts. But we had one against Washington where it was fog and then rain came. And Ooh. it was 38 degrees. Ooh, I wonder. rough. Brutal. Like not- we lost 56 to zero. Damn. Oh, my God. <laughs> That must suck where it's Brutal. not cold enough to That's snow, right. but it's like just a cold downpour, you know? Yeah. Well, in the, yeah. the fog, I mean, I can't imagine how that affects you as a kicker. You can't see the freaking posts. Yeah. Right? I mean, you can kind of see them, but when you're back, it really does affect your depth perception. Yeah. And, yeah. and where you're looking. And you just have to trust like, okay, this is going straight. And just bang it <laughs> as hard as you can. And yeah. Just hope, yeah. Yeah. Essentially. Um, did you guys ever play Washington State? We did play Washington State. So Um, a guy I went to high school with, Marquise Wilson, he was a receiver for over there. He actually got drafted by the Bears, was playing with the Bears for a little bit. Nice. Um, Yeah. Yeah, Washington State, that's a fun stadium to play at. Oh, yeah. Tell you what. It's it's a a loud atmosphere. The the stadium's like really closed in on you in uh a sense. And I I hit my long in college there, 50. So that was a pretty cool. Heck yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty cool. Okay, I, I've lined up and tried to, like, kick a 50-yarder, you know, just, just in practice. And I think I've gotten close once. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, <laughs> yeah. like, dude, I can't imagine. What, what does it feel like when you step up and you know, like, you know, game on the line, I got to hit a 45-yarder to win the game in, like, a college atmosphere? Like, what what goes through your head in that Go moment? into that psyche. I love this question because this is the question I run through my mind in practice. Uh Everyone's watching me. I have to make this kick. Every kick matters and you have to go one for one, one for one. And that's how I still train kids. And that's how I teach them is go one for one. This kick matters. And if you miss it, like, what are you doing? You know, you shouldn't be missing kicks. You should be doing everything correctly. If you're not, and you're missing kicks and it's your fault, that's on you. You know, we got to correct that issue. Yeah. And so, um, I, I just had a great mentor in college that he helped me be able to spread my knowledge, but, uh, I forget where I was going. 
Oh, just the the mindset, the mentality. Like what, what goes oh, through yeah. your head? So the yeah. mentality, it's. Um, I, I just think one for one. When you go out there and go one for one, and you train by yourself, that is the hardest thing to do. Because if you if you can do that, that's self discipline. You can go out on that field, you can you can kick, and it's nothing. Um, and yeah, there's pressure and this and that, and people yelling. I think I had more pressure from my dad more than anything. <laughs> Got you. Yelling, oh, your girlfriend's watching. Dude. <laughs> Naturally. And just yelling dumb stuff that would piss me off. And it's like, let me just kick, you know? Yeah. And You're not helping and dad. <laughs> not at all. And I would get mad at him. But at the same time, I look back and it was like, I'm thankful for it. Um, cause then I have teammates yelling stuff like you suck this, that, this, that, this, and it would just wouldn't phase me because it's not my dad, you know? Yeah. And I look yeah. up so much to my dad that my dad, his word matters. And, and when someone else is yelling at me, it doesn't really phase me. And when you're in a crowd of 80 plus thousand, 60 plus thousand, you can't hear. So I got you. They're screaming, especially when you're on the road. What about, uh, what about the rush? Like the, the actual, like, they're trying to block the kick. Do so, you do you look at yeah. that at all, or are you just locked in straight field goal post? And if they hit you, they hit you. Or if they block, they block it. Yeah. So the, it's a it's a timing thing between the snapper, holder, kicker, and it, it's a science. We have it down to literally the seconds. And every single kick we tracked at practice, we'd okay. go back, we time the snap. If the snapper was snapping slow, coach would get on him like, "Why are you snapping slow?" And it, it was a matter of like. <sighs> 1.25 seconds we had to get the kickoff yeah. so oh, wow. okay it's a it's a snap hold kick boom and that ball's out of there and yeah. if you're at a 1.4 that's slow like you're getting your kick blocked and if you're at like a 110 you're too fast and you might jam yourself okay so a little technical yeah, <laughs> no the, I, I love hearing it because i've absolutely. never ever had a conversation like this with a kicker you know what i mean yeah. and, <laughs> and somebody who's actually like done it i'd at like a to high break level. it down yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, and that that's awesome because you know I mean you think one point two five seconds like that is a fast freaking boom boom bang, boom bang, bang. yeah and you're going right with your eye your periphery you're seeing the snapper but you're really looking at your holder and his fingers are if you can see they're tapping uh-huh. and then he throws his hand up and just says ready set yeah. and then right when his hand is like flashing that ball's coming. And you got to go. And so I just keep my hands on the, the fingers. And when I see that hand move, then I'm going. Okay. I don't worry about anything else. And I, I pick my target before I kick. And that's just where I'm Absolutely. kicking. I don't worry about the uprights. If you start to think about the uprights, that's when you see kickers miss. Right. I got you. It, yeah. Well, I've always been amazed, too, watching uh, holders. They, they are one of the most amazing things for me. To be able to catch it and get it down that fast <laughs> – I mean, dude, yep. that's not an easy task. No I mean, anybody who's ever tried yeah. doing that, you have to get it down and set it in the one spot. I was doing it in practice, and I was nervous. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, it's it's really hard to, to catch it, put it down, spin it, right to. Yeah. Um, Laces out, out Marino. Starcevich, my holder. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Kyle Starcevich, my holder at Iowa State. He was up for holder of the year. He, he's an awesome holder. It was like I couldn't. You can't ask for a better holder than him. It was perfect every single time. And when it wasn't, he knew it was his fault. Like every uh-huh. time, like if yeah. he's like, sorry about that. And it was like, just the laces were off, like barely. It was, it was like, I didn't notice Kyle. You're good. Yeah. I'm, you're good. <laughs> but it was a science for him. Like he, that's all he did. He was on scholarship there. Cause he was a quarterback, wow. got hurt, blew his knee out. Um, he, he blew it out four times, I think three Jeez. times. Oh, damn. Yes. And so That's he just rough. became holder, but they ended up putting up on scholarship his senior year. So he was a scholarship holder. I didn't know there was a holder of the year. <laughs> yeah, freaking that kind of trophy. blew my mind right now. Oh yeah, you guys got to look up on Twitter or I wonder what the uh, guy's name they Google use for that holder of the is. year. Yeah, like the Bolitnikov and like the. <laughs> Luke he's got a whole shit. YouTube video. I think he's got a whole video like sent yeah. in, submitted. That's it's cool. clean, dude. That's that is cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, so. I just remember, you know, and I think we've told this story on the podcast a few times. Oh, God. When Aaron and I have, uh, Aaron and I actually met coaching football at Napomo. And um, <laughs> we were coaching the freshman team and we we're doing kickoff practice. And I don't know, man, I was just was feeling good. I was like, I'm going to get some boots out. You know, I'm going to freaking, uh, I'm going to boot one into the end zone. Well, the day before it had rained 
And so the floor was, or the the floor, the grass was still a little slick. And he's wearing like Vans. And I'm wearing like Nikes, but they don't have any grip at all. So I go to plant, and then when I plant, I just freaking slip, fall back, and eat shit. Charlie Brown did. Oh, straight Charlie Charlie Brown did. And everybody, I was just so embarrassed. Everybody was laughing so hard, and Aaron never lets me forget that. (laughs) No, that was was one of my favorite moments of coaching. That's my kicking moment in the sun right there. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So you, uh, so you did your thing at or- or Oregon State, and obviously you finished your career with Iowa State. What uh, what went into transferring to Iowa State, or what was the reason, or was that just your natural progression you were planning? Yeah, so uh, when I was at Oregon State, I was just going through a lot mentally, I think. And, um, like, I- I've reflected on this and, and talked about it before, but I, I think um, I was going through a lot. And I was taking Adderall and the, the, I was taking another thing that the doctor prescribed me. That was a downer. It was similar to Xanax. And so they were putting me like on these drugs and I think it was messing with my head. And I went in just wanting like as a young college student, I, I, I qualify for Adderall. I have really bad ADD. And so I was getting it through the doctor there. But I think that kind of started to drive me a little crazy. Gotcha. Honestly. And, and so I recommend anyone who's listening to this, don't put your kids on Adderall. Don't take Adderall. But um, they tried to put me on something else. And I just was starting to be unhappy. And it reflected into my game. Yeah. It was nothing against really Oregon State. Um, but it was really me that was the problem. And I think um, I, I, I just started to not really talk to people. I stopped hanging out around certain people. And I separated myself and I started to like really not like the game anymore because I was doing bad. I was just not happy. And I I called one of my old coaches um, that went to USC and he would train me at these college or at these camps that I would go to. uh, And I talked to him and, and kind of told him what's going on. And I was like, I'm looking to transfer. And he's like, well, funny thing, I'm I'm going to Iowa state to be their special teams coach. There's um, and I was like, I'm thinking about transferring. Let me, get my papers all sent up. So I sent up my papers and I got them signed off and I talked to my coach and let him know I was leaving. Um, and I, I decided to go to Iowa state because I trusted him and he was a coach that, um, he was an ex kicker. He loves the game. He, I knew he could make me love the game again. And, um, when I was at Oregon state, we, I had my first special teams coach was an ex NFL coach. He was pretty cool. He, he was cool guy. Um, but then he ended up leaving when the new staff came in, Gary Anderson staff okay. under Gary Anderson. I had a tight end coach as my special teams coach one year. <laughs> and then the next year they brought in a special teams coach who uh, was an ex safety for Oregon state. He was a walk on that had one good game at Oregon state. And I really did, I butted heads with the guy and I really don't wow. like him and he's still their coach. Um, and I, I just think it's unfortunate for the program because he sucks at yeah. teaching kids. Yeah how to work hard and be a, like, he just was not it for me. And, um, he tried to just assert dominance and I was like, this is the final straw. I'm out of here. Um, so I, w- I went out to, a- to Ames, Iowa on a whim of, I've never been here before. And dad, I'm transferring. This is what like, mom, I'm transferring. This is what I'm doing. And I, I have a confidence. I'm going to go there, win the job. I had to go win the job. They had a guy who was already going to be their guy. He was on scholarship, uh, as their field goal or as their uh, kickoff guy. Okay. And they were looking for him to be their kicker. And I had to come in and win the job. And I went in there and um, I won the job, obviously. But I, I think I wanted to love the game again. And that's why I left. I got you. I haven't really talked to too many people about it too. So you guys are. That, no, that's, hey, that's yeah. so important, dude, is like being able to like recognize that, especially at a younger age, like, yeah, you know, being able to be like, Hey, I'm not happy. Like, what can I do to like get myself out of this rut? That's, that's huge, man. Like mm-hmm. props to you. And I think, I, I think it especially was, um, getting off of those pills cleared my mind. Yeah. Of, yeah. And, and I think I was so consumed of, the, with the social media world and Adderall, you got to take it to get good grades and this and that. Yeah. And I, I was a straight A student, got good grades anyways, but I'm just a little ADD. Yeah. And well, I'm a lot of ADD, but <laughs> See, uh, you need help focusing. Right? Yeah, yeah. I re- just really need help focusing and sitting down. But I, th- I think that was the wrong, that's the wrong way to do it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the we'll weather helped you. I don't think the weather helped you at all either. Yeah, like you were weather. saying. 
Definitely. Yeah, and the weather, it, it just adds to it, and then it, you just fall into a downward spiral. You yeah, really yeah, do hit right. depression, you uh, know? And it, I'm a huge proprietor of mental health, you know, when oh, I have family who's, you know, I have been through mm-hmm. it all. And, uh, you know, they just, there's so many things that can mess up the mental chemistry in the mind. And, you know, Adderall can have an adverse effect and, mm-hmm. you know, trigger depression with the weather, yeah. with school, with the stress yeah. of being a kicker and, and trying to and I had a, keep and your I had job. And I had a girlfriend too at the time. Yeah. It just was, yeah. And what you needed was someone you trusted, like you said. A fresh start and some and some sun. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but here's the crazy thing. Here's yeah, the crazy yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. So I go to Iowa State on January 5th, 2017, on my birthday. Okay. Wow. That was my birthday. So I flew out there on a four-hour, three-hour flight with my dad. We get off the plane. It's negative 12. <laughs> oh, and my dad, he looked at me, and he's like, are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> And, you're and like, we both put on our beanies and walked out to the rental car. And we get to the car, we're shivering, like, "Oh my gosh!" Damn. And he's like, oh, "You're you're crazy. You're, you you got to do this now." You know, yeah. all I had was two suitcases and a backpack. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you weren't wearing Cali basketball shorts, were you? Because I actually shit, that's all wore we wore shorts more often than you'd think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that like I was in Colorado, and I think the warmest it got it was like forty. And I wore like mm-hmm. cargo shorts the entire freaking time. And I walk yeah, into a you're thing, indoors, and it's like yeah. warm. And I yeah. walked in, and the guy was like, before I even asked him for anything, he goes, you're from California, aren't you? <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah. yeah? Yeah? How do you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So, All right, so you're at Iowa State. Uh, I'm assuming, well, I'm not going to speak for you, but uh, do you probably have a little bit better mental aspect now, starting over a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. How was it playing in the Big 12, or how was your time at Iowa State? Iowa State was by far my favorite year I think I had out of all of my years playing. Um, the coaching staff was phenomenal. They were a younger staff, uh, and they cared about us, and I think that was really important. And they made us do a lot of team events. They held us accountable, and the weight room crew were scary. Like, you didn't uh-huh. want to mess with them yeah. or else. And I think that's really what sets the tone with a lot of these college football programs is if you have a weight staff, because they're with – the the kids more than the coaches are yeah and so they're your head coach away from the head coach yeah. and i think um i think that helped us at iowa state i forget what I was, oh playing in the pac-12 um we so i don't know if you know we beat oklahoma oklahoma at oklahoma okay so that yeah, was, he's an Oklahoma I'm a, fan. He's an OU I'm, a, fan. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a huge Sooner fan. But, okay, so uh, that that by far I, is I know our history ing- with Iowa State. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's ingrained in my mind just because I went three for three that game. Yeah, and you could hear a pin drop when we scored the last touchdown with like 40 yeah. seconds. In left. Norman it was in Norman. Oh man, who was who was silent. the quarterback that year? It got to be Baker. Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, baby. <laughs> I got. His I remember that Baker. game. I remember you. That. Oh my God. That is. Oh, that's so crazy. Yes, yeah. It was such a fun game because I had. Oh, my dad I know was where there. I was that night too. Fuck. Oh man, I remember. Okay, I remember the night now. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was that was you. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was dope because my I had my dad there, and then I had my uncle from Arkansas and my two cousins from Arkansas, uh-huh. and um, they, I think my cousins hadn't seen me play live, and so oh, it was wow. their first game. And so what I a got game! To just have a great game and beat Oklahoma. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was shitty. That was a shitty, that was a shitty game. Fun yeah. plane ride home. I tell you what. I bet, oh, man. Bad, so, man. were yeah. you with Matt Campbell? Yes, Matt Campbell. Yeah. Matt Campbell was your coach. That guy's a great coach. He has completely he's turned awesome. that program yeah. around. And he's gotten a lot of NFL offers, oh, yeah. college offers, yeah. and he's turned them all down. And he's I'm pretty sure he said he would only go to Ohio State. So is, if you guys see him at Ohio State, that's fine. Uh, God, that's I, I, I want to I want to like him, though. Oh, you got Coach Day. Yeah. I want to like yeah. him. I hate Ohio State, I know. man. Yeah. What about um, go there. Brock Purdy? Brock Purdy was there after I left, but yeah. he is from after Gilbert, Arizona, gotcha. where I live. Oh, oh nice. really? Okay. Yeah. Is he in yeah, the NFL yeah. yet, or is he still at Iowa State? Uh, he's still at Iowa State. He's got. He's going into his third year. So Last this, year, he put up freaking top five quarterback yeah, numbers. Yeah. And this year, he's primed to be in that top slot again. So he that's why Matt Campbell's year. not leaving. You know that, right? Yeah. Once, and he's got a he's got a sophomore running back that's dominant, yeah. and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. I think they're what number thirteen right now. So yeah, I think so, they're three rankings. Top, yeah. yeah. And hopefully they beat Oklahoma again. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't do it. 
No. Yeah. Not do. Yeah. Well, uh, it's always Iowa State wait. or Kansas State. Yeah. That, it is that, like, I because we always, I always yeah. mess with them because like they'll beat Texas and they'll beat all the good teams and yeah. then it's always like a twenty-one to twenty game that they lose to Kansas State or something. Kansas State. Like, yeah. God. We lost to Kansas State on the last Kansas play of the State. Game. Oh. I don't know, dude. I, besides, like a year or so, That's they're rough. always usually a pretty damn good team, dude. Yeah, to yeah. Be they had a coach, and so is Iowa State. State. I mean, they've had a couple down. That guy years, was a but, zombie. Yeah, uh, you know. Oh, you took Snyder. Oh, yeah, that guy's a zombie, dude. He was like his fifth coaching stint with the team. Like, yeah. yeah. He, who who coaches at a stadium that's Fitz, named after them? Yeah, you know what I mean. Right? It's like it's Fitz like stint yeah. In the heart. That guy yeah. was just coaching there in a different time. That's funny. Did you? uh did you ever have any NFL aspirations? Like, oh, maybe I could get good enough, or was it just you know doing your thing in college, going to school, getting that education, or did it ever? Um, yeah, so that was my initial goal. Was like, okay, now it's the next step. I want to go play in the NFL. And when I transferred to Iowa State, doing that, I lose a lot of the recruiters' eyes that are on me at that time. Yeah. And so then I have all new coaches that are watching me for my final season. And so it's kind of fresh in their mind. It's one guy, but it's also just it's my first year that they can watch me. And so that was kind of hard in that t- sense. But I had a great pro day. I think I went um, seven for eight. No, I went eight for eight. One hit like we had an indoor, and it yeah. hit right on the inside of the pole of where the okay. pole would be. So it was like I, I tell myself I went seven for eight, but my holder says I went eight for eight. So uh, <laughs> There you yeah. go. Well, but yeah, your holder's great, the a, top in the nation. I'd go with him. Yeah, and we, there was probably like 50 coaches watching me at the time, and I had a great kickoff session, and it was a good experience. Um, and then I, I was waiting for the NFL draft. I had a couple co- like teams reach out to me. Um, and then on the last day of the draft day, I got a call from the Cardinals, and the guy was like, we're kind of narrowing it down between you and Matthew McCrane from Kansas State, and we just don't know if – which one we're going to go with, but just be ready for a phone call from this number. And then, uh, I never got the calls. And then I saw Matt McCrane's name come up and I was like, no. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So it was, it was kind of a bummer. And then after that, I did the pro day at, uh, the Rams, um, camp with Jason Sanders. Okay. And, I outkicked Jason at, I'm not going to lie. I outkicked him at that camp and and field goals. I went, I think I was perfect on field goals that day. He had a stronger, he has a phenomenal leg. He was kicking off like no other. And so that's what I think call like these NFL teams look at is these guys with these massive legs, like who can kick off through the uprights because they can train them to be better kickers. They'll mold them in the background and do all that until they're ready. Um, But Jason, he, the kid had a cannon. But it was a. It was still. A, a, um, yeah, it was cool doing that with the Rams. Hell yeah, man! That's, that's a, pretty sick. Yeah, that that's a cool, cool opportunity. Who? Uh, yeah. Who, in your opinion, little random question? Who do you think the best kicker ever is, in your opinion? Vinatieri, goaded. Yeah, I was gonna. <laughs> he has to be. Yeah, he's straight down, down the middle. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the guy's automatic. Yeah, I actually had a chance to meet him. Oh, really? Was really? Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, I, I got to meet him at a Chris Saylor kicking event. Um, Chris Saylor, he puts on these events in Vegas twice a year where 500 to 800 kids come out and showcase their talent to this one guy who ranks everyone in the high school world. And I actually have been working that since 2012. Um, I go back and help and work it, and it's a really fun experience to do that. And yeah. Adam Vinatieri's kid is coming up through the ranks right now, and he's kicking at these camps. And so I was there, Shoot. and Adam came out, and we got to like talk to him for about 20 minutes, and it was, it was <laughs> so cool to just pick his brain and ask certain questions. He's you know, like a he god. Totally he's a like god. <laughs> yeah, and he's oh, mad. Man. Like you'd be surprised, he is a big human in person. Really, his biceps are huge. His quads are huge, and he's wearing like these tight gym clothes because he knows he's big. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude. and he wants everyone else he's to like, know. I'm a kicker, but I'm yoked, and I'm also yeah, a he's goat like, kicker. Don't mess with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was I was gonna say if if you didn't say him, I was gonna say him. So yeah, yeah. Adam yeah, Vinatieri is the goat. Like, you can't. I, I don't feel like arguing right now. Yeah, I think I can. I'm gonna go no, with Adam I think Vinatieri. We all can. <laughs> yeah, Adam solidly sure. agree. Yeah. Wherever he he went, winning followed. Yeah. Um, okay, so obviously we've talked a lot about football, but um, we, we were talking before the podcast uh, how you work for Mohawk and you're uh, a sales rep 
kind of talk to yeah. us about life after football. What, how'd you kind of get into that? And, and what was your, your first steps? Yeah. After? So after the NFL draft, I really, I needed to find a job in my mind. I was like, okay, well I got to find a job. I'm not going to play in the NFL. There's 140 kids coming out of college to try and win an NFL job. That's for six people, yeah. you know, and the reality of it started to really grow in my mind that it, that's not going to happen. And I've seen guys work for years and still not make it. So to me, I was like, I'm going to get ahead of this. Yeah. And so my dad, his friend is Michael Bates and he is the senior regional vice president for Mohawk. And uh, so I reached out to him and called him and said, Hey, I'm looking for a job. And what can I do to like submit an application? And, and he got me to the right person. And I flew out to Georgia, did an interview, flew oh, back wow. the next day. And then I got a call from them saying, you're hired. We're going to bring you out here. And so I was out there for three months, went through a training program. So for three months, I was there for f- with 14 other cr- college graduates. Uh-huh. We lived in a home two suites hotel together. And, um, that was just, it was a great experience because we all grew so close together. Yeah. Um, and now we're all reps out in the field working for Mohawk and we just learn the product and you, you learn how to sell and yeah. sell yourself. Cause in reality, people buy from you. They're right. Well, yeah, you want to buy from, you want to buy from someone that you can, you, know, you trust, you know, especially, yeah, I mean, right now with how, how ridiculous everything is with the shipping containers and all the crap that's going on. And- oh, it's brutal. And we got an article today, um, that said that containers expect the prices to continue to go up. Dude, and don't tell me that. Oh. We just had to, sh- we just had to <laughs> shut down a container program so bad. because, um, the, the prices have gone up so much that it's over, it's over the cost of the goods now. Yeah. Yeah. So we are telling it, we can't sell it to you until yep. we can basically. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's brutal. So how do you like being a floor salesman? How do you like working from a hawk? I love it. I, I really enjoy the freedom. It gives me a lot of freedom, and I think that's um, really important to me. Uh, I work Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and once it hits 5 o'clock, I, I really try and separate myself from the job. Yeah. Um, I have two phones, so it's it's easy for me to just to put this phone down, and it's completely separate from this phone, so that's really nice. I keep all my cool. social media off it um, and just really focus on – Sorry, I got a text at the same time. No, you're Focus good. <laughs> on um, on work when I need to, and everything else after. Yeah. Uh, but I, I really do enjoy working for Mohawk because, like I said, I get the freedom. I have a company car. They pay for my gas. That's pretty sick. Um, it's a great 401k program. They company matches up to six percent. Right so it, they're really investing in us, and I put as much money in my 401k as possible too. So I, I really same. see the benefits of doing that at a young age versus very smart try for dude. the NFL, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What about, but, um, please tell me you're not driving a minivan. Cause Ryan drives I'm driving a, a minivan. A oh Chrysler my gosh. Dri- I, I, I want to put a soccer mom sticker on the back of Ryan's minivan. Yeah. yeah I got an ax throwing sticker on the back of mine. Cause it's yeah. Cause I'm a gangster in that. Yeah. Thing. yeah. There you go. Okay. You, you, needed gang. you needed to keep that rep up a little bit. You're like, Oh, yeah, God, my car's packed place. with boxes all the time, yeah. and I'm always trying to slay carpet oh, yeah. and samples. So, cool. well, as we're wrapping up this pod, uh, oh, we wanted to do the. No, you're good. What was your? Do, do you have a favorite gem on the hidden on, on the hidden gem on like the Central Coast you like go to when you get when you come here? Like some hidden that, gems, like your spot, yeah. like your spot you like going to. Um, there's a spot up at. Uh, over by Judkins. I don't know if you know where the playground is, yeah. the rocks yeah. right there. I like That's that spot. spot. to go watch the sunset. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a great spot. Hoagies is another one. Like for me, <laughs> I got to go to Hoagies. Cool. So that's like a, a good spot. And then I, I think just going on the hikes that yeah. are out there, I always hike when I'm home. We always okay. go to hikes. Okay, 100%. Yeah, well, yeah. Have you yeah, uh, so I think, tried the views at Pismo Preserve yet, dude? Those views, I haven't done the Pismo Preserve are, yet. I really want to. I mean, it's not I a, it's living at home for not a while. crazy hikes, but I mean, it's like it's, it's just incredible just beautiful views. views. Yeah. yeah, I haven't lived at home since 2012. Yeah, yeah. Been so it's while. almost been 10 years. It's kind of sad to think about. That's a trip. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> That's I crazy. miss it, but I do love Arizona. I really do. Arizona's awesome. It's hot, but you get used to it, and. Yeah. and when it starts to get cold, you're like, well, this sucks. Yeah. It's below 80. <laughs> My sister just moved over there. Okay. Yeah, right outside yeah, of Tucson. Um, what, what part of town? 
right outside of Tucson. From that's that's I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Benson, I think. That's south. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Podcast. <laughs> what up? How's it going? Nice to meet she just got you. home from work. She's a CrossFit instructor. There you the go. That's gang. what's up. That's yeah. What's up? <laughs> so yeah. as we, we're wrapping this up, I got one more question for you. It's something so, I've been. What? Hang on. So you said your hidden gem back home. What about in Arizona? Ooh, in Arizona, uh, we, we've just started to really explore. So Sedona's really cool. If you've never been to Sedona, I would recommend it. Yeah. But we've also, uh, we just recently went floating down the Salt River. Okay. And the Salt oh, wow. River has wild horses that just roam through the river. And you're sitting on a tube, drinking beer, having a good time. And all of a sudden, there's a freaking horse crossing the stream. The <laughs> That's pretty cool. And so, yeah, it's, it, it's so much fun to do that. I, yeah. If you guys ever come out to Arizona, check that out. Hell yeah. Dude. I got a question. Yeah. You, you said yep. hoagies. What's your go-to order? Uh, Big hitter right here. Wrap. Pismo wrap? Okay. Yeah. Yep. So it's my, no my girlfriend and I Spencer will get a Pismo. I'll get a Pismo wrap. She'll get a Dirty Bird and we'll split it. No, that's the, that's way, to the way to do it. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's really the way to do it. Nice little $50 meal right there. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. yeah right? The price is no going from $5 shit, in high school. Bro. I know. Dude, $5 it's, Thursdays? God. It's seven, $5. Yeah. $17 now for a Dirty Bird. Yeah. And, and with curly fries. Is, yeah. yeah. But like, I don't even ever. Do you ever eat the curly fries? I do. No. You By the, by the time I can't. I'm, yeah. The, by the time the I'm done. The burrito's the yeah. size of my head. Yeah. 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 But <laughs> I find a way. Yeah. <laughs> But Get yeah, so a little question I've been asking our, our most recent guests, uh, a little quick hitter. Uh, do you have any, like anyone that would be good for our, for, like a good interview suggestion that you know that would be good Ooh. fit yes, for I have us? a phenomenal suggestion. Because we, I, lo- I love doing this. I got this off another pod. He, he, he will talk to you guys. He'll probably, he could talk to you guys for like two hours. Okay. His name is Dustin Stanton. Okay. He was one of my teammates at, or- at Oregon State. He's a lineman. Uh, I lived with him for four years. He uh, went to the Cowboys, and he's been with their team for a while. Hell yeah. And now he's just a trainer out there and works in a gym and um, trains like elite athletes. But he's a, a six foot seven, 300 pound goddess. He looks like Centaur. And <laughs> he, he he's a very intelligent person. Hell yeah. And you guys could probably get some cool stuff out of him because he was yeah. a kid who, in high school, he was also six seven, one ninety. 190. So oh, wow. he was just a freak athlete that he, he was bigger than everyone. And he, he has a whole different experience than I did. And he went from playing tight end to having to gain a hundred pounds to play line. That's wow. sick. Okay. The lineman and said, you have to gain weight or else you're not going to play here. And so he's moved the tra- He did the transition and almost made it to the NFL. Dude, so I experienced so. his whole transition to getting big. Dude, cool that experience. is sick. Okay. Well, we yeah. would love to have him on. That would be awesome. Yeah. Put in a yeah. good word then, man. Let them know what yeah. we're let them know what we're about here at the Garage Gang. Oh, brother. no doubt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, bro, thanks for coming on. You, dude, you've been a great. Yeah, interview. thank you you've guys been, for having like, me. I really I love, appreciate it. It's, it's been awesome doing this, yeah, man. It's been, Absolutely, it's been awesome and great chatting it up, and telling stories yeah. and shit. Man. I gotta say, it was really, really cool to talk to a kicker. Yeah, like I, yeah. I like I, yeah. I, I just it's cool to hear stuff from your angle of the game. I yeah. you never yeah. have conversations to talk to people about the kicking aspect of the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, so absolutely. I got to say that was actually really really interesting and it's it pretty cool. I, the one point two five seconds still blows my mind. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's you got to get it off quick. The sweet yeah. science, baby. Yeah. Sweet science. Oh but. yeah, down to a T. <laughs> All right, Garrett, I'll let you uh, get going, man. Thank you let's, guys uh, again. Let's keep in touch, man. Put out a good word for us. Uh, and uh, absolutely, as yeah. always, man. Yeah. GG's Garage Gang out, baby. Yeah, GG's Garage Gang. Woo! Let's go, baby. <laughs>